All right, guys, I'm going to get started here. Thanks again for attending. Uh, for those of you that have uh, participated before on one of these, you've kind of heard this spiel. Uh, for those of you that have not, uh, my name is Josh Wise. I am the VP of Customer Success. Uh, my responsibility here at Redstream is to ensure that our uh, solutions are meeting your needs, um, to listen to your feedback, to communicate that feedback to the development team, and also from the development team back to customers. Uh, make sure you're getting good value, you're adopting the usage of the product, and most importantly, um, that you're happy and you're using the product to the fullest extent based on your uh, particular business needs. So I'm a very good resource for uh, feedback, suggestions, ideas, trying to understand uh, things or decisions, uh, anything like that. I'm a good, good resource for that, good listener. Um, so please do not hesitate to reach out to me for any and all of those things. Uh, the purpose for these once a month uh, usability webinars is to uh, kind of walk through uh, things that are frequently coming up um, as it relates to uh, kind of what uh, users are utilizing or need assistance with or a deeper dive into as well as to show uh, some specific new features that we release out um, into the production environment that you all get to utilize. So today, we'll spend our time going through uh, the advanced user permissions that was part of uh, our latest release. So we'll dive into that. I'll do my best to try and keep it to 30 minutes, give or take, respecting your time. And as always, uh, we do record these webinar sessions and a link automatically gets sent out to you. So if something comes up, um, and you need to hop off, don't worry about it. We record it and automatically send you a link since you signed up for the webinar. Um, now, before I kind of jump into the user permissions, uh, I want to just kind of take a step back here and make sure that we're all on the same page uh, with a couple of things. Um, oftentimes when I'm speaking to, to users, I'm, I'm shocked that they aren't aware of a couple of these items. So I thought it would be a good use for all of us. So uh, the first thing here is every time we uh, put out a new release, <clears throat> the way in which that we communicate that to you guys is up here with this little alert icon. Um, now, this little icon here, <clears throat> you guys won't see on your side. This is something for a, a super admin at Redstream here, so only we see that. But you guys do see this little bell, okay? And every time we put out a, a new release here, that is what we deem noteworthy or big enough to share uh, with the masses here, this little bell will have an alert on it uh, to kind of let you know, hey, we got something new we think is of interest to you, so you should come check it out. So when you click on this little alerts notification here, uh, there's three different tabs here. Um, this first tab here is new features. So we feel that these are noteworthy, uh, impact everyone, the masses, and, and can help you have a better experience with the program. Um, so that's what this first tab is here. Uh, so as an example, the latest release that we came out here is uh, advanced user permission. So we like to let you know. So we put a little picture or description. And then as you click on that here, uh, you're going to get some more in-depth feedback on that particular release. Now, sometimes uh, when I write these things up, I'll use screenshots if it makes sense. Uh, sometimes it could be a little bit um, too detailed and hard to cover everything. So sometimes I'll give you a little write up and then I'll link you over to a specific article uh, on that item that goes into more depth. So uh, they vary in terms of how I write them, uh, but nonetheless, that's information about that big new feature, if you will. Then from there, guys, the second tab is uh, cloud updates. And what that is, is uh, you know, I, I don't know the proper way to say it, and I've got my own terminology here. I, I kind of call that the, the, the nerdy lingo or the geeky lingo. Uh, that's more straight from the developer's desk uh, in their uh, fancy words, if you will. So within each of uh, the tabs or the articles here, it is the specific release notes, okay? And when you click on those specific items, 
what you're going to see here is kind of how the development team shares the information with us and passes it along to you guys so that you can see all the work that's going on behind the scenes. Now, some of this stuff may be foreign to you. It may not make sense to you, and that's okay. Uh, the idea behind it here is a way for not only us internally to track all of the work that's going down and happening with each release, but also a way to communicate with you guys to let you know that, that we are grinding, we are banging on the solution constantly and constantly working to improve this thing. So you'll see things related to, as they uh, categorize them, tied to usability, uh, tied to bugs that are going on in the system that are impacting users. Um, you'll also see feature releases, right? So uh, each and every release could or could not include everything from features to usabilities to bug fixes and everything in between. And so this is our way of kind of sharing that information with you. Uh, this last tab here, uh, we built that out originally in the system when we weren't as feature rich. And so it was kind of more of a tips and tricks or workarounds, if you will. And being that we continually are enhancing the solution and we've been uh, almost live on the platform here for, for over two years now, a little more than two years, about two and a half, um, you know, that kind of wanes off a little bit. So we, we've got some ideas internally of how we can utilize that tab to bring you guys some value. But nonetheless, I feel that I wanted to share this with you guys, make sure that you guys know how that we're communicating this information to you. You can share that with your users. It links out to knowledge base, et cetera. Okay. So that's the first thing I want to talk about today. Make sure we're all on the same page. The second thing I wanted to cover today um, is our actual knowledge base. Uh, this is where we keep articles, uh, how-tos, videos, et cetera. Um, so you can get here a couple different ways. You can uh, type in redstream.zendesk.com uh, and bookmark that and save that for you and your staff if you deem it appropriate. Also directly from our website, redstream.com, uh, you can engage with our knowledge base there. But the whole purpose behind the knowledge base, guys, is to <clears throat> provide some uh, self-service if you're looking to learn or to do things or how to do things. Now, obviously, all of you that are on our cloud solution have 24-7 uh, support, so uh, business hours, nights, and weekends. If you need help, give us a call. Hopefully, you all have that phone number, um, and obviously, we will help out as best that we can. But for those of you that kind of like to work at your own pace or uh, maybe you don't want to pick up the phone and call or maybe you want some more specific details and you want to kind of self-serve, this is a great resource. Uh, as you'll notice here, I've got it broken into two different sections. Uh, this top section or the cloud uh, PMS property management software applies to all of you on the phone today. So this is the section that you want to go in. And then how I tried to break this thing up is I tried to break it up based on uh, kind of all the sections you see in here within the software. I thought that was kind of a good way, and then I've got some extras in there as well. But nonetheless, we've got channel manager, gift certificates, booking engine, the configuration section. Uh, there's the release notes and where they tie into reports, invoices, people, reservations, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, so you guys kind of see that. The other thing that we try and do a good job about, and some people like it, some people like to read along as opposed to watch videos, but we've created a how-to video section. So if you're more a, a, a visual and audio person versus reading step-by-step -step instructions, we've got a bunch of how-to videos on uh, what I deem the uh, more uh, frequent functions or actions that you guys are doing day-to-day. -day. Um, so as you jump into any of those particular articles, you're going to see a video that kind of visually walks you through so that you can pause, start, rewind, however you want. So uh, again, guys, we're just trying to make it familiar for you and give you some options, whether it's a video or an article. But nonetheless, I think this is a, a pretty valuable tool. Um, so definitely encourage you guys to use that. And for those of you that want no part of this and you want to call support, uh, by all means, please do so. Our goal is to assist you in whatever way is most convenient for you. Okay. Now, uh, let's go, uh, oh, you know what, guys, I'm so sorry. I didn't even share my screen that whole time. Sorry about that, and I'm just seeing it. So I'm 10 minutes in. So let me, let me go through that again. So hopefully you guys were following along with audio. I made a boo-boo, my bad. So uh, alerts, alerts. 
and notices and releases within the system. I'm sorry, up here in the upper right hand corner is a little bell icon. When we push out a major release that we deem uh, impacts the masses, it will come in this tab here, new features, and there will be a little ringing bell and a red circular icon, okay? This is where all the new features go. And as you click on these features, you're going to get a write-up of that. Sometime I'll do pictures. Uh, always I'll link you to a knowledge base article. Sometimes it's more in depth, so you'll just need to work off the knowledge base article. So this is where we share this information. So that's, in, that's our way of communicating to you guys, again, what it is that we're releasing. Uh, this tab here, uh, sorry you couldn't see it before, but this tab here is, is the geeky, the nerdy, straight from the developer's desk kind of information. And this is our release notes and everything that happens within that particular release. So if you jump into any of those, it'll kind of let you know the specific day and time that that release went live. And then from the developer's desk, it will uh, categorize it down into feature or usability or bug. Uh, again, to show you guys that we're grinding behind the scenes and everything that's going into that product uh, or feature. Um, so you can see here, if I just kind of scroll back, we got a release seven months ago, six months ago, five, four, four, three, two, one, one week ago, six days ago. So uh, this is our way of communicating with you and, and showing you that we are constantly investing in the solution uh, and, and for lack of a better term, grinding to make it better constantly. Um, the other thing that I showed, I apologize, was um, support with the redstream.zendesk.com. So redstream.zendesk.com, guys, I apologize you couldn't see it. This is our knowledge base article. Um, uh, this is where we keep all of our information and how to. Uh, so hopefully you were following along, but now you can visually see it. So this top section here applies to all of you. It's the cloud PMS section. I've broken it down by mostly what you see. Uh, the tabs are within the solution itself. I tried to, and I've got a couple other ones. Uh, but you've got booking engine and gift certificate, configuration, invoices, reports, reservations, people. So you can see all that information, right? And then, so when you're thinking about it, as you're using this uh, knowledge base, think about kind of the section that it falls within and you can kind of go there. Or uh, if you just come up here and you type in the search box, you can type anything in here and it's going to search uh, the actual knowledge base and everything within it. Um, so if I type in invoices and do a search here, I've got 47 results for invoices. Now, something to point out here for those of you that are not familiar with our knowledge base, when you use this search function, you need to make sure that it is tied to the cloud PMS product line, okay? And the reason for that is, is we have a knowledge base here for both of our reservation software products. So our old legacy product, we still have clients that utilize that and we still support a knowledge base uh, on that particular product line. Uh, but the majority of everything that you're gonna see there is gonna be tied to the cloud PMS. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned for those of you that are visual uh, audio as you are today and you wanna see my screen, right? Uh, sorry again, uh, we have a bunch of how-to videos um, so we kind of went through and, and we tried to focus on the main functions of the program. <clears throat> so as an example, here's one on creating an add-on package and we'll walk you through step-by-step -step where to go and you can pause the video and rewind the video and, and all of that good stuff. So again, a great resource here, guys, is our knowledge base article. Please self-serve yourself, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, you have 24-7 support. So if you prefer to get on the phone and have us uh, talk to a live voice, we absolutely uh, encourage that and, and want to talk to you as well. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's move on to, to user permissions, okay? So that was in our uh, most recent release, if you will. It is something that impacts everyone. For those of you that have been on the solution a while here, uh, you're, you've probably been a little frustrated because um, you know you, we didn't really have granular user permission levels and uh, at your businesses, um, if you have more than one person on your staff that you're working with, chances are that that person may have different responsibilities. Maybe they're a reservationist at the front desk. 
Maybe they're a manager and they need more information. Uh, maybe they're a housekeeper and you want to give them access to the product to let you know at the front desk that something's clean or dirty, uh, but they don't need to see, you know, financial data. They don't need to touch reservations and all that stuff. So the point here, guys, behind the user permissions is to uh, give you guys the flexibility to determine uh, what access your various different users have uh, within the product line, okay? So uh, in starting off, where is it that we go to make those changes? So the first thing is you need to be the admin uh, access and you need to be the person that, in essence, we set up the database for. So in essence, you are the... Uh, excuse me, the admin of your particular database, right? And I'm in my demo database as my super admin here. So I would then navigate to the configuration section. And within the configuration section under your business, we have our users, okay? So when we jump into a user, this is where we now see everyone that has access to our database. So as for those of you that are familiar, if you need to add a new user, you come up here in the upper right hand corner, you click this add user button, you enter in their name and their email address, right? And uh, what then happens is it fires off an email to that person, to that address to register their account so they now have access to the program, okay? Now, from there, you're gonna see the various different levels of permissions, right? And uh, when we built this out, we tried to not only incorporate uh, how we used to do it in uh, Redstream Professional. For those of you that are familiar with that, I like to reference that because we've got a lot of uh, customers that migrated from that legacy product. If you recall, the way that that worked was is that uh, you had to pick level access one through 10, right? And one was the lowest you could go, and 10 was the admin level. And if you picked level five because you needed to have whatever access in level five was, that means that they automatically got levels four, three, two, and one. So the way that we used to do it wasn't even a very good way. Um, so we kind of adapted that uh, as we built these, uh, what I'll call advanced user permissions out here. So uh, you'll notice the various different permission sections. Right. So we tried to bake, break it up, uh, depended upon, you know, kind of how people use the program. And we tried to compare existing users, front desk, back of the office, managers, owners, housekeepers, accountants, uh, things of that nature. And I think we did a pretty good job, but I'm always curious to, to hear your guys' feedback. So let's kind of go through these things. So within the uh, reservation section, and I'm, I'm going to jump back here. I created a, use, uh, a different user for today, and I'll show you what this looks like. Um, so within the reservation sections here, uh, notice here, if I click this manage reservations, in essence, what that means is, is, is you got access to the whole kit and caboodle, everything tied to reservations, right? You can view them, you can generate the letters associated with the reservations, you can add new reservations, you can take payments, you can edit reservations, whether you're uh, deleting them, moving them, invoices, things of that nature. Um, there's voiding payments and canceling and, and deleting those types of things. So I guess editing, excuse me, does not include cancel and delete. We added this one later on. So if I click any top level and we tried to segment it by moving it over here to the left and everything kind of goes below. If I click on anything top level in here, it gives me everything, okay? And if I unclick it, then I get nothing, right? So you kind of see the function. So hopefully that makes sense and that is very user friendly. Uh, that's how I would define it, right? I get all reports, I get none reports, okay? Now, if I want people to have specific access to only certain things, right? then I have to pick and choose within each of these things as I'm setting the user up or as I'm finding out that that user maybe has access to things that I don't want them to, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of show you what that looks like. So for this particular user, I'm gonna log out and log back in as them, and I'm just gonna kind of show you uh, what that looks like when they only have view access to the occupancy map and they only have view access to reservations. But uh, before I can do that, let me show you what kind of the admin has access to, right? So under reservations, if I come back here to the dashboard, 
I can still see all the reservations, but then I can actually jump in here to this reservations and I can add charges, I can view invoices, I got access uh, up here to actually generate various different letters and fire it off to that person, right? If I come out to the occupancy map and I have full access, obviously I can make reservations here, I can uh, edit rates on the fly, right? I can do all of these things. So for so those of you that are admins and you have this access, you already have uh, control over those things, right? Um, but what I did here for my webinar user that I created today, I'm saying, hey, we're only gonna allow some access and I only want them to be able to view reservations and I only want them to be able to view the occupancy map, okay? So I'm gonna log out here and I'm going to log back in as that user that I created because I want to kind of show you what this looks like. So I am now a, a user that can only view a certain information here, okay? So I am now a Josh Webinar, and because I haven't seen the latest release, here's what I was talking about earlier. That's what it looks like when, when someone, when we've put a new release out, and it's a bigger release and it goes in this feature, but someone has yet to look at that. So if you don't come in here and look at this stuff, that's gonna be dinging all day. But you saw once I go in there and look at it, then that ding kind of goes away and it's a way for us to reset it and ding you again later uh, when we need to. But nonetheless, okay, back to Josh. Uh, the webinar user, I only have access to view. So I can see the dashboard, right? I can see things going on, right? Because I've got some view access to reservations here. But notice over here on the left-hand side in my navigation bar, there's some things missing here, right? So I'm missing the configuration section. So I don't have access to the, to the configuration section. I can't even view it. I don't have access to the booking engine section or the channel management section. I can't even view that stuff, right? So you're seeing how that's kind of impacting some things here. If I jump over to the occupancy map here, I can view reservations on the occupancy map, but if I pick up the phone and I try to make a reservation here, I'm gonna get this little note saying, hey, you don't have permission to view this content or perform this function. Please contact your administrator if you need access. So the assumption here, guys, is that every user knows who the admin is or who kind of owns the database, if you will. So they know to reach out to you, the owner or the manager or whatever, right? But you'll kind of see, we try to give a very polite warning. Oh, hey, sorry, you can't, you can't really do that. So I can't even click and drag here uh, on the occupancy map. If I click on this reservation, you're gonna notice some, some buttons that are normally here are no longer here, right? So I can't, uh, rebook this, I can't move this, I can't add a unit here, uh, I can't take a payment or any of those kind of functions uh, that you would have as a super admin because I've disabled those, right? So this is uh, an example of what it would look like and how you would go in and you would toggle uh, those permissions, right? So let me log back out. I wanna show you one other practical thing today. So I'm gonna log back in as myself this isn't a screen you guys normally see because i've got super admin here but i'm now the admin of my demo property here so i'm now back to josh wise and now i'm seeing reports and configuration and booking engine right well i want to jump in here and i want to give you another practical example so i'm going to go back to that user i created today so guys let's say you got a housekeeper okay Everyone hopefully has housekeepers or maybe you clean the rooms yourself, whatever it is. Uh, but as another practical example that applies to most, to most people, you've got a housekeeper, they're out cleaning the rooms and instead of either walkie talkie radioing to you or walking back up or driving the golf cart back up or whatever you guys do to the front office and saying, hey, uh, this is clean here, go ahead and uh, you can check people in. Uh, if you want to give people access uh, to do so you can so that way they can come in and they can mark units clean or dirty but here's another example I want to give you as it kind of relates to a housekeeper that I hear all the time is I want them to be able to run a housekeeping report only right so they don't need to see reservation reports or ledgers or deposits payments revenue any of that jazz because the financials of my business are not imperative to the housekeeper doing their job but what is imperative to them doing their job is seeing arrivals, departures, stayovers, 
and any particular notes that I like to take associated with guests, right? So what I would do for my housekeeper at my fake property is I would come in here, I would come into the reports, I would turn on this housekeeping report, and then I would go ahead and save that, right? Now, let's say I'm, I'm Josh Housekeeper, so I'm gonna log back in again. So I'm gonna log back in again, and now I've got this reports uh, navigation section over here, right? And I can jump into reports, but you'll notice now I've only got access to uh, the housekeeping reports, which is our uh, by reservation status and our guest forecast. So before, it was kind of like an all or nothing, right? And that didn't really work because we don't need our housekeeper seeing all our personal financial information tied to the business. But now we've got the ability uh, to drill down and get granular here and have them be able to pop in here, see this report, print out this report, understand who's coming and what units, anyone that's departing, staying over, guest counts, et cetera. And obviously how many people are in the room as well as any particular private notes or public notes for the housekeeper in this particular instance. So again, guys, there's another practical example of uh, something that you would set up or permissions that you would provide to a housekeeper, okay? Uh, let me show you another one here and, and show you a little bit more. Um, sign out, sign back in, get to my database here, and get back to the configuration section. So again, configuration sections, users, go into the particular user. Now, here's something else I think is, is kind of cool in, in what we did. So originally when we were testing this, uh, the configuration section was kind of um, a manage everything or manage nothing, right? So you got the option to manage everything or you can manage nothing, okay? Well, when we started looking at this, we start going down and kind of breaking it down by these sub uh, categories or subsections within this configuration environment, right? Well, we've got the business details. So this is, you know, your business name, contact info, then you got your users and payment settings, right? So you can set up Visa, MasterCard, American Express, whatever. Then you've got uh, the ability here for uh, your different guest types, adults, children, iguanas, whatever it is that you do, deposit polys, et cetera, et cetera. So then we start saying, okay, well, maybe certain users need access to this information because uh, maybe uh, they need to be able to add users and things like that, but I don't really want them messing around in my units. I don't need them creating units, right? I don't need them naming units. I don't need them determining if my units are bookable online or not. That doesn't really fall within their job function, right? And then uh, what I call the holy grail, if you will, rates and taxes, you know, this is what your whole system functions off of, right? You got your, your taxes, you got your revenue accounts, you got your packages, point of sale items, obviously you got your rate plans, uh, then you got your actual rates and you got your seasons and your dictating pricing and things of that nature. Well, most people don't need access to that type of stuff, whereas, right, people could, or uh, there is value in giving them access to the different tags, right? the people tags, reservation tags, custom fields that go on the reservation notes, uh, things of that nature. So maybe that is uh, important, right? So in essence, the long-winded version of what it is I'm trying to explain to you, within this configuration section, we've kind of broken it down by those subsections, okay? So if you want to allow certain uh, front desk users to be able to do some customizations around tags and custom fields, great. You can give them access to do that, but then they don't need access to rates and controlling units and, and business details and things of that later, right? Or maybe maybe you're a larger property and you've got kind of a, someone that handles your marketing and communication. Maybe we only want to allow them to have access to what our email verbiage is on our uh, confirmations, our pre and post day communication and the templates and how those templates look, right? So nonetheless, you've got an example here of uh, some practical examples and how you can kind of get real granular here. Now, for those of you that are a one man 
uh, shop, you know, God bless you. You, you know, you're doing it all. Uh, so this may not apply, but for those of you that got more than one user and you're not, you're not solo uh, doing it all by yourself, I think this is an example. So uh, last thing I'll show you here, I'm going to give, you know, Josh webinar here, the ability to kind of see those customizations under the config section. So I'm going to save that. And again, I'm going to log out here and let me show you what that looks like just so you guys can have a sense for if that's something you want to give access to or not. So I'm Josh Webinar now. I log in. I can see the configuration section here. I come in, and now I only get this subsection, right? So you guys get the point here. Uh, this isn't rocket science here, but uh, we thought this was powerful enough that it impacted every uh, one of our customers, which we almost have 300 uh, clients on the cloud now, uh, so growing steadily. So that's very exciting. Um, and I wanted to come in here and show you guys practical examples of the granular user level permissions that you now have uh, access to. Now, lastly here, um, if you come back up here to this alert on your own time as you deem fit, you jump into this advanced user permission uh, and you come click down here into this knowledge base article, it's going to take you out to the knowledge base right into that specific article related to user permissions and uh, one of the support teams, Wendy, bless her heart, she came in and she identified exactly what each of these things do. She's got some little moving graphics in here, which I think is great. So if you guys want to learn more about this and get even more granular, by all means, uh, please come back here and, and visit that particular section. And as always, if you need assistance, please do not hesitate to uh, reach out to us. Okay, I want to talk about two more things. I'm right at 32 minutes. Uh, I don't think the first five minutes count because I wasn't showing my screen. Again, my apologies there. But let me talk about a couple other things here. So uh, the first thing is um, we're constantly improving and working on the system. Um, we have wonderful feedback from users. We get feedback from the support tickets that you all send in and that we work on uh, hand in hand together. And so we've got, as you can imagine, a laundry list of, of hundreds of items uh, that we have to do's on that we try and prioritize and categorize based on things that will impact the masses first and then other things from there. Uh, something that I would say is not ideal as I'll describe it is our reports. So again, for those of you that navigated over from uh, Redstream Professional, we had more reports and a little bit more powerful reports, give or take, depending upon what you were using in the old system. Uh, reporting is uh, a very technical thing within any reservation software, and it's imperative to your business, right? It's how you see the health of your business. It's how you project out the future. It's how you compare against the past. It's a very important thing. Um, as most of you are aware of, have heard me speak about before, hopefully, uh, we have uh, uh, purchased a reporting platform, and we have been working diligently for the last several months to integrate that reporting platform, okay? So, the purpose of me speaking about this is this is kind of an update. Um, now, as we've probably all experienced in one form or another, uh, being able to project or predict delivering of uh, development releases is literally impossible, and I've learned that the hard way, uh, probably uh, been uh, opened my mouth uh, up when I shouldn't have on various different items. Uh, but nonetheless, we're getting closer with the reporting platform. We are currently integrating it into our solution. We are theming it to make it uh, look like our solution. And then what we have to do is we have to build out the reports. And reporting is very complex, guys, because it touches so many different facets of the program. It touches the reservations. It touches the invoices. It touches uh, the historical data. Um, it touches revenue, it touches sales, uh, revenue accounts, taxes, it touches the booking engine, it touches the OTAs, blah, blah, blah. So you get the point here. It's a massive, massive major undertaking. But the idea behind the reporting platform is to not only give you more powerful reports, but also have some customization ability uh, for reports to be created. Now, ideally, the thought was is when we release this, 
we would be able to give you guys full access and you could go out and you can build your own reports at your leisure whenever you wanted to. Realistically, it's just not um, what I would call user friendly. I consider myself a non-techie, a layman person like most of you and trying to go in and create these reports and build out database tables and associate the data points and all that jazz is just you know, it's not something that an everyday layman can do. But nonetheless, we will have the ability to assist you in building out reports and create uh, graphs and charts and things of that nature. So we're getting closer to that. Uh, our goal here is to try and get that done uh, by the end of April here and try and get you that reporting platform um, before you guys, most of you guys get into your busy season. So it's where the majority of our resources are going to. So wanted to kind of give you guys an update on that. I know it's not a definitive, but for those of you not happy with the reports, we've got something coming. For those of you that have been patiently waiting uh, on the reporting platform, we're getting a lot closer here. So there's an update. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about here uh, is uh, a price increase. Um, now, uh, most of you uh, hopefully have seen the notification that went out last week related to a price increase. Um, and I just wanted to talk about that so that you guys can understand we're, we're very transparent here. Um, you know, we're not a big corporation. We're a small company just like you. And everything uh, that we do is, is for you guys. Um, and without you guys, we don't exist, right? So uh, as it relates to a price increase, um, I can assure you we're not sitting fat or pretty in our ivory tower. That is not why we raise the price. Um, it is not a, a reflection of increasing profit margins that go to the bottom line. It has nothing to do with that. The reason why we're raising uh, prices, guys, is so that we can continue to improve and enhance this foundational product that we're trying to make the best in the industry um, with the uh, new clients that come on board. Uh, requires uh, additional support staff to work with them. It requires additional uh, hosting bandwidth server environments to ensure that the solution is, is operating functional and optimal at the highest speeds possible at all times, whether we're in uh, off season for some of you or peak season or peak days of the week or hours of the day that we have thousands of users banging on the solution. So this is where the, the, the price increase goes to uh, reporting platforms and improvements and, and additional costs, additional development teams. That's where all this is go. It's a function, a cost of doing business. So uh, what we wanted to do with that price increase, for those of you that are familiar or needed more explanation, we wanted to make it as convenient as possible, um, guys. So, so what we tried to do is give you guys an option. If you want to stay on month-to-month -month billing, which is what you've all been on historically, if you want to stay on month-to-month -month billing, you can do so, uh, but there is a dollar increase uh, per room per month, which is kind of how we do our billing that takes place. Um, and for those of you that want to uh, lock in a discount or your existing price, uh, then we're kindly asking you to convert over to an annual subscription model uh, where you pay in advance for a 12-month commitment and you get that price uh, reduction or the same price. So uh, hopefully you guys uh, understand the reason why we did it. Hopefully uh, I've communicated that well enough. Um, and hopefully you guys see that instead of just trying to big corporation uh, just, you know, say, hey, your price is going up and it is what it is. We tried to be as friendly and flexible as possible. So just want to be transparent around that. Again, if you guys have any questions or concerns or anything like that, uh, I'm a great resource to reach out to and, and we'll, we can have a conversation around that topic. So uh, again, thank you very much uh, for uh, your loyalty and support on this product. Uh, we certainly hope that you, you enjoy it as much as we enjoy delivering it to you. And as always, if you have comments, questions, feedback, ideas, please, please, please share them with myself or anyone on the team. 
We always want to make this solution better. Uh, that's that's what we do. We're here for you. So uh, we need your feedback to, to continually improve. So again, thank you very much. Hope you guys got value out of today. Uh, I tried to keep it to 30 minutes. I'm a little long-winded, as most of you know. Um, by all means, reach out if you have questions. And again, uh, this is recorded. So if you need to come back and reference this or, or anything like that, you'll get an email with this information. Uh, lastly here, we also have a, a user kind of forum webinar that we do on the second Tuesday of every month. So unlike today, where it's uh, all me just kind of blabbering along, uh, you can actually uh, interact with your peers and other properties and understand how they do things and, and ask questions and things like that. So um, we got some feedback that that would be useful. So now we just need participants for that. So by all means, please sign up, uh, try and make time for that. It's a great way to learn from other properties um, that also use our solution and you'll be surprised at the things that you can learn there. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it as usual. Uh, hope to speak with all of you in the near future here. And as always, uh, please let us know how we can help. Thank you guys very much. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.